This is the Arctic Liquid Freezer 3 all-in-one liquid cooler. For those of you new hardware shoppers, Arctic makes some of the best performing and cheapest PC cooling components on the market. I used this exact cooler for a build I did in Thermaltake's Tower 300 last year, and I loved it so much I decided to take a closer look. I guess I spoiled the video by saying that. I don't even care. It's that good, I have to share it. Hey YouTube, I'm Danny, welcome to the channel. The Liquid Freezer 3 has a couple features that I wanna talk about before I even get into the video. The first being the fact that this thing is set up right out of the box. All your cables are managed. It is almost completely set up for you to be able to just install it right onto your motherboard and get going. Second, the radiator on this thing is 38 millimeters thick, which should provide increased cooling over a standard 360 mil. They also offer a wide range of compatibility options. You can use AM4, AM5, or you can use Intel's LGA1700 or even their new 1851 socket using the included contact frame. If you wanna use Intel's LGA1200 or 115X, you'll need to pick up one of their mounting kits over on Amazon for $9. That's really not that bad considering the price of the cooler. I'll cover that in a second. The last great feature is the fact that this comes with a six year warranty. So you really don't have to worry about the cooler not working, the pump freezing up, water evaporating, whatever you are worried about with liquid cooling, you've got six years to cover this thing. Most people replace their computers within six years. Now let's talk price. The cooler I have here, the Liquid Freezer 3 360 in white, comes in at $153.99. Now it's constantly on sale over on Amazon. In fact, the last time that I bought one, it was on sale then too. So I've never paid full MSRP. Maybe it's just like a marketing scheme, I don't know. But the price right now on Amazon is $110.10. $110.10. Anyways, 110 bucks for a white all-in-one liquid cooler with RGB lighting, that's a good deal. If you wanna save yourself a couple bucks, you can get it in black, that's 149.99, but currently on sale for 107.79. And then the best way for the 360 mil, saving yourself the most money but getting the exact same performance is to go with the standard Liquid Freezer 3, which comes in at $129.99, currently on sale for $90.08. These coolers also come in a 240, 280, or even a 420 millimeter option. That's right, 420 millimeter radiator. That's big, it's three 140 mil fans. Make sure you have the room if you're looking to buy that one. The prices for those range anywhere from the lowest being $77 all the way up to $120 for the 420. Why don't I show you what Arctic includes in the box with the Liquid Freezer 3? Don't worry about this damage. I was worried too, it's perfectly fine. We'll look at the accessories in a sec. See, no issues. The pump and cold plate are cradled in what feels like a recycled tray above the radiator. The pump cover is also in here. It's got RGB lighting, is magnetic, and has a small VRM fan underneath it. Removing the pump and radiator leaves the box totally empty. As you can see, the cooler was well protected and comes almost completely pre-assembled. Don't forget to peel both the protective cold plate sticker and the pump cover electronic sticker off before use. There's only one cable coming off the pump head and that's a three pin, five volt addressable RGB connector. As you can see, the radiator is thick and comes with all three fans installed and cable managed. The cables run through one of the radiator tubes into the pump head for that ultra clean cable managed look. The accessories bag doesn't have much to it. There's two cables providing two different options for plugging the cooler into your motherboard. One allows you to split connections to individually run the radiator fans, AIO pump, and VRM fan, while the other simplifies everything to one cable connecting only to your CPU fan header. I decided to go this route because I'm lazy and I wanted things to go as simple as possible. How about you? Would you go with one cable or the split option? The rest of the mounting accessories are the AMD risers and screws, Intel contact frame, screws to mount it, the tool to remove the original CPU bracket, all the radiator mounting screws, and a small tube of Arctix MX6 thermal paste. That's all it's got. Not only has Arctic included minimal accessories, they've also made installation as easy as possible. 
Okay, so I might have gotten a little carried away and done my benchmarking before talking about installation. So let's rewind a little bit and show that, and then I'll talk about the performance. Why don't I cover Intel first since my performance test bench is AMD. The small hex driver they include is used to remove Intel's factory mounting system. Please remember to unlock the retention arm before unscrewing it or it'll fling open since it's under pressure. Once you've inserted your CPU, lower the contact frame onto the socket, aligning the mounting holes. Then secure using the included four screws. They only have a little bit of thread on them. You'll then apply your thermal paste and mount the cooler. The screws require a bit of pressure to engage the threads onto the contact frame. After that's done, you'll plug in whichever PWM cable you choose to the pump head. If you go with the single one, you'll route it to the CPU fan header directly. If you choose the split one, they're all labeled accordingly. CPU to CPU fan header, pump to AIO pump header, and VRM can go to any extra PWM fan connector. This will give you more control over each item in your BIOS, but it does require some additional steps. Lastly, place the magnetic pump head cover onto the CPU cooler and you're done. AMD is very similar, except you won't be using the contact frame, you'll be using a different mounting method. Let's talk about it. Instead, you'll remove the factory AMD brackets as with most aftermarket cooling solutions. Then you'll place four plastic risers onto the mounting holes around the socket and secure the two metal brackets with four included screws that were in the same bag as the risers. Make sure the brackets are on the right side, L for left and R for right. They angle away from the CPU. You'll add your thermal paste and install the cooler onto the bracket. Secure by tightening the two attached screws. Again, it's hard to get the screws to thread so it can require some force. The rest is just like Intel. Choose either the single PWM cable or the split one. And if you go with the single cable, you'll route it to the CPU fan header directly. If you choose the split one, they're all labeled accordingly. CPU goes to your CPU fan header, the pump to your AIO pump header, and the VRM can go to any extra PWM fan connector. Then you drop your magnetic pump cover onto the pump head and you're done. Actually, I lied. Mine is complete on the motherboard, but obviously the radiator is still just kind of floating here. What you would need to do after this is install the motherboard into your case and install your cooler radiator into your case as well. You can either mount it top side or you can mount it on the front of your case. The option's totally up to you. I prefer to mount on the top so that all of the heat is going out of the case rather than coming in, but that's just me. And now the part that you've all been waiting for, the performance test. Obviously everything's in pieces now, but my test bench is pretty simplistic and I try to use the same one for a lot of my cooler testing. The test bench consists of a Ryzen 7 5800X3D CPU on an MSI B550 Tomahawk Max Wi-Fi motherboard. I use 32 gigabytes of T-Force Delta at 3600 megahertz and an MSI RTX 4080 Gaming X Trio. When I do uh, CPU benchmarks, I run three different tests. I have Cinebench R23, which puts a load on the CPU, 100% all cores. So this is like the most amount of heat you're gonna see in a test. In the real world, um, you really won't experience this. Most people won't but I wanted to push as much heat and as much power at the CPU as I can to kind of show the limitations of the cooler. So Cinebench is our first test. Then we move on to the Blender benchmark. That's another CPU demanding test, not as demanding as Cinebench, but it, it's still up there pretty good. And then finally, I use Unigen Heaven, which puts a demand more on the GPU, um, but it does simulate like a gaming test. It, it kind of plays like a game and that will give you a real world scenario as far as what performance you can expect to see out of this cooler when you're gaming at home. I guess before I cover the results, I should tell you what other coolers were included in this test. I've got three different coolers in addition to the Liquid Freezer 3 that I put on this test bench. And they were the Hyperflow 360 by Montec, the Deepcool LT720, and the Fractal Design Lumen S36. These are all 360 millimeter coolers and they all have a pump and radiator combo 
uh, very, very similar. And some of them are close in performance, some of them are more expensive. So I gave it a wide range. The first test up was Cinebench R23. In this test, you can see the Liquid Freezer 3 actually achieved the highest temperature at 73 degrees Celsius. But in reality, I don't think it kind of matters because they're all really similar. The Hyperflow achieved 70 C, the LT720 hit 71, and the S36 hit 72. The next one up was the Blender Benchmark. This is using version 4.3.0. And the Liquid Freezer 3, again, achieved the highest temperature next to the S36 at 68 degrees Celsius, while the Deep Cool LT720 hit 67, and the Hyperflow, again, won at 66. The last test was Unigen Heaven, where the Liquid Freezer 3 saw 62 degrees Celsius, and the Fractal Design came in second at 59C, while the Hyperflow and the Deep Cool one uh, hit 57. I know it seems like the Liquid Freezer 3's performance isn't great compared to these other benchmarks, um, but one to two degrees really isn't that big of a deal. Uh, honestly, I would say these things are all pretty on par with each other. The performance is, is median. Now I did check idle temperatures too. The Liquid Freezer 3 only hit 34 C for their idle temp, while all the other three hit 37 C. Now one thing I was curious about when I originally did my test, like I told you, I set it up to run on just the CPU single cable that runs into the cooler. I wanted to see if that made a difference. Like if I split it off, is it gonna improve temps? Is it gonna make temps worse? Uh, what was the case for this? So I re-ran the tests on the Liquid Freezer 3 with the split cable uh, going to the CPU, the VRM, and the AIO pump header on the motherboard. I didn't change any settings or anything. This is just out of box motherboard settings. And I did the same for the other coolers too. The results for this one are as follows. In the Cinebench R23 test, it came down two degrees. So it only hit 71C in uh, Cinebench rather than the 73C. So that was a nice little improvement there of two degrees. Then in Blender, I saw the exact same temperature at 68C. So no improvement on that one. Unigen Heaven is where I thought it was pretty impressive. I saw a three degree difference going from 62 down to 59. So that was pretty impressive that using the split cable improved the performance on Cinebench and Unigen Heaven. And obviously you can tweak settings in your BIOS. Like I said, if you use the split cable, you can run uh, a higher speed for the pump just to continuously circulate your fluid. Uh, you could run 100% if you wanted to. It does get a little loud when the, the pump is running at 100%. Uh, but your fan headers, you can pick your speed for that as well. Whereas if you're using the single cable, it makes everything easier, but you're limited to one uh, setting for all three components, the VRM fan, the radiator fans, and the pump itself. Now, noise is an entire category all in of its own. And I don't have any kind of professional equipment or anything besides uh, my little decibel meter app that I can download on my phone, which I didn't use that this time, but whatever. Uh, but I did record it at idle speed and during full load in, in Cinebench testing. So why don't you give it a listen? If you couldn't notice, the Liquid Freezer 3 was much quieter than any of the other coolers in the noise testing. So even if its performance wasn't the best, its noise levels definitely were. Okay, here we are at the end for the final thoughts of the Liquid Freezer 3. And if you jumped right to this point, shame on you. You should go back and watch the rest of it so you have context with what I'm saying now. I really like the price. It makes the entire thing, the entire package, worth it. So when we talk about price, we talk about value. And they give you great performance, good noise levels. I, I think the aesthetic is awesome. So 
all of that coupled together with a cheaper price. I mean, the price of this thing, if you don't get the RGB, is cheaper than some air coolers, like the big bulky air coolers, and you get liquid cooling. So you're getting the same performance, cheaper, and a, a cool design aesthetic and everything. Second thing that's awesome is the install is super easy. It is one of the easiest coolers to install, especially if you use the, the fan connection that's just the one header that goes to the CPU. They've already cable managed everything, but it is a really easy install process. There's not a whole lot to it. As you can see, it, it doesn't take any time at all. Performance is great. It might not be the absolute best, and I'm sure there's other liquid coolers out there that are gonna beat it too, um, but it was great. It is cooling my 5800X3D with no problems. The temperatures were not out of control. Even 73C in Cinebench is just fine. I've seen way worse, believe me. The last two things I like is about the connections. The fact that they give you the option to either split it into individual control or you just want it simple and plug it into one cable, that's super neat, I love it. That gives you the choice. If you don't wanna really get into a whole lot of cable management stuff, you can just do that one wire. If you want more direct control, that's nice too. Now there are a couple dislikes because nothing's perfect, right? The first thing I don't like is the instructions. There are none. You have to scan this QR code and then the instructions are digital found on their website. So if you don't wanna use your cell phone, you have to. The instructions are digital. If you don't care, it's not a dislike for you. For Intel, an issue for me is that you have to use their contact frame. So if you have another uh, contact frame, it doesn't matter. You have to use the one that Arctic includes with the Liquid Freezer 3 because it bolts onto that contact frame. I just find it as a little negative. I, I wish they could have integrated it so that that wasn't part of the connection, but it does create much less hardware in the box and uh, easier install, so I understand that too. This is a big radiator. Like I said, it's 38 millimeters thick. It is definitely fatter than most cooler radiators. So the thing that you have to worry about is its size. Some cases might not be able to fit this, uh, if you're top mounting it, you may end up running into your VRM or uh, MOSFETs or something on your uh, motherboard, the big heat sinks and stuff like that. So it's just something to keep in mind is that it is a bigger style radiator. Uh, if you decide to use this, make sure that you have the room inside your case to fit it. Overall, I like the cooler. I think it's great. You can't argue with the price. The performance is good. The noise levels are good. The design is great. I love the look of this. If you're looking for a cooler that cuts out all the extras and gives you the best performance for your dollar, Arctic better be your first choice. I know it's mine. And if you want more cooler reviews or even CPU components, GPUs, I do everything here on the channel. Make sure you get subscribed down below. Or even better, I'll leave some videos right here that you could check out next, because this one's done. And as I always say, I'm Danny with Danny's Tech Channel, and I'll see you in the next one. Put him up, put him up, come and show me.